Hey everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art rep, and today I'm going to show you this really fun and beginner's watercolor step-by-step. -step. Now this is a loose landscape of the Carpathian Mountains with rhododendrons. It's all very wet into wet, beginner friendly. Um, you don't have to draw, you don't have to be able to do any of that to do this. I provide all of those resources to you for free, but I am going to demonstrate how I got here. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that you can see everything that I'm teaching, demonstrating, or explaining step by step. Um, you can find things like the traceable on our website. Uh, you can find information about the materials in the description below or in the video page on our website. And you can see this gorgeous little piece here. But I did this on um, Artistico uh, watercolor paper by Fabriano. It is a 140 pound 9 by 12 sheet. You could use a different one. The reason I like this is because it's in a block and that means that all the pages are glued together except one little corner so that you don't get such big waves and wefts. I'm also using a number 14 soft aqua by Raphael and I had this little square wash brush that I don't mind uh, having be destroyed for the frisket. Um, for my convenience, I used liquid incredible mask and i talk about that again in a little bit in the beginning about that in the liquid picker upper today's colors i used a little nickel oz yellow and hansa yellow medium you could if you just have one yellow it's fine you don't need both it was just a luxury that i enjoyed quinacridone magenta ultramarine blue opera pink any bright pink you have will be fine i use quinacridone gold that's a color i like i like quinacridone gold deep but anything in that quinacridone gold range is fun. I just like the one that's a little closer to burnt sienna. Um, and if all you have is burnt sienna, you're okay. And then phthalo green. So you, do you have to have the exact colors I have? You really don't. If you have close approximations, you can still get a great result. Um, if you don't have liquid masking agent, but you want to paint along, you'll just have to be careful of the edges. Um, you know, I masked it out so I could be like all free, but you know, it's okay if you're like, no, no, I'll just paint carefully in this space. <laughs> That's an okay choice that you could do too. John. Yes. Do you think they're ready to do this? I'm ready. All right. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back, meet me at this pad. We're going to start painting this. So jumping into this, you want to start with either freehanding the heart in the mountain lines very lightly onto your paper or using the free traceable that we have on the website and you can follow the traceable instructions i have videos on how to do that and written out instructions on the watercolor blog um, but you want to begin with your core lines on your paper and you do want them to be light i'm going to take um, a brush that i use that's not particularly expensive this one just happens to be a square wash and I'm going to get a little bit wet. I have soapy water and I'm going to use the incredible white mask, which is by Graphics, not sponsored. I'm just telling you so you can find it. And I'm going to load it up on my brush. I poured some out. And I'm going to paint around the outside of the heart very carefully. Wherever this is, it won't let the paint go. This creates a resist. A resist. A resist. What does it resist? Paint and water. Ah. That's pretty straightforward naming. Isn't it? It's just That's painting around this heart. So unlike most art supplies. <laughs> just. It yeah, they, it's it liquid is. masking agents. Um, sometimes uh, we okay. have a problem in the art world where... Uh, we refer to the brand, like we'll call it a liquid, like Frisket, but that's actually a brand of liquid masking agent. You could also um, use your Cricut cutout to create stencils. It's There's a lot of ways of doing this. This is just a have, really easy one. I have to say, liquid masking agent is a little spy versus spy. It is a little spy versus spy. You know. But what this is going to do is that when I do a very wet application of paint, it's going to let me paint very loosely, very, very loosely within the confines of the shape of this heart. Now, one of the reasons that I like, I'm going to rinse this out right away. Liquid masking agent can be damaging to your brushes. 
Um, but one of the reasons I like this particular brand, you can't use a hairdryer and any other liquid masking agent without risking it really sticking into the paper. But the Incredible White Mask, you can on cool and it's a way to accelerate it. Or if you want to be just thoroughly safe, you let it take the 20 minutes it needs to dry. I'm going to use a hairdryer because, you know, for the purposes of a tutorial, we'll call this step one. And when we come back, my masking agent will be dry. And I'm going to show you how to paint the first thing. So in this step, I'm going to want to paint the background sky. And I'm going to start with just a round brush. This is a number 14 Raphael Soft Aqua Synthetic Squirrel. I'm going to get my brush wet with water. And I'm going to paint in everything above the mountain lines with this water. Just water. Now I want it to be... Uh, thoroughly damp with no dry spots right because i want the sky to really flow in to itself but i don't really want fish to be able to swim in it so right. it's really a matter of making sure that it's shiny and not matte but that it's not soaked like puddle fod right this is one of those areas where being on the block is so helpful to us what's that mean uh, being on the pad block like we talked about at the beginning. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, where all the edges being glued down prevent that warping and wafting. Right, I didn't know if that was like a new kid's reference. <laughs> but come here and grab my brightest yellow, which is the Hansa yellow. You could use primary yellow. Just any bright, bright yellow. I'm going to load it up pretty wet into my brush. I'm going to come here just off the center of the heart. And very loosely on the toe of the brush, making back and forth little strokes, trying to paint in that sun center of that sky. I'll rinse out, right? And now I'm going to get a little bit of my quinacridone, maybe even a little bit of my opera pink, into the outside of this yellow. And again, look at what we're doing. I'm going to brush this out. With this pink. Now I'm doing the quinacridone because I want to come back with this purple, you know, and really kind of get in there. Uh, and quinacridone is the other part of that purple mix. So that's what's safe for me to get into. I'm just getting stronger amounts of quinacridone. And you can see I come in and I just paint it wet into wet. Right, the paper is wet, my paint is wet, my brush is wet, everything is fully damp. And I'm trying to make irregular brush strokes. Now, I know this will change a lot as the painting itself sort of dries. And if you want to, interesting fun fact, you can come back with a nice load of yellow back into what you have already. You can even come along your mountain lines with that. You know, just bloom right up into that. It'll mix on the canvas. It'll look really nice. Now I'm going to rinse, rinse, rinse. Get all the pigment out. And then I'm going to make some nice purple using my ultramarine blue and my quinacridone magenta. Now you could have purple already in your palette. And that would also be okay. I'm just going to come in from the sides. And you can see I'm just letting it bloom in where it wants to go. Isn't that fun? It is. Maybe not coming all the way down. And you can see I kind of wiggle my, my brush in. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle the brush. Back into my quinacridone. And just paint it back in. Now, at some point, right, we'll hit like max fiddle. And we'll be like, oh, I got to stop fiddling. But we're not there yet. And that cool little moment where the pigment sort of bleeds down into everything. I love that. I'm in darkening these little edges. I 
That's a really pretty sky. It is. It's going to just be really beautiful. And if you've been struggling with your acrylic skies, you're going to find that in some ways, watercolor skies are a little bit friendlier to create. There's just less that we're battling. Come in and kind of touch that corner up. Coming back with some strong yellow. So I'm just going back in. So I can do a lot of really expressive stuff with this. And guess what? I'm done. I don't really want to do any more. I want this guy to just kind of rest and relax and figure out what it's going to do. Every time I do this, it'll be a little bit different and yet very similar. And so for you guys at home, remember that on your expectations that you will be doing it a little bit different but similar now I want this to fully dry and um, in general we don't want to hair dry our watercolor because like this is a hundred percent cotton paper because it's Fabriano um, it's gonna keep pulling the pigment in the pigments gonna continue to mix on the paper to soften and to do work right so we really can't paint anything else here and because I'm doing a splattering thing here and this is still wet I can't even like put a piece of paper over it because it would bother the paper so there's nothing to do for you and me but like if you need to go grab a cup of coffee or run a fast errand <laughs> or change over the laundry whatever you've got going on this is a great time to do it we come back and this is all dry I'll show you the next step So this is going to be the drawdown method, and this is an excellent way to use the drawdown method, which is where you lay color and then join water into it, and the water pulls the color down, creating a gradation. Fantastic for distant, distant mountains. So I'll lay the color down first. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my quinacridone magenta again and make a nice little purple here. Nice little juicy purple. You can see got a nice little bit of purple kind of. Coming up, now I load up my brush, come along this mountainscape. Painting along this, painting a little bit of that purple. And I want enough of it where it will pull down when I join it. So now I rinse, that's a thorough rinse. And then I'm going to come underneath it with water. I'll take the water down to the mountains below. And you can see that as I join that water up to what's up top, we get a bit of that flow down. I can always add a little more pigment if I want it. And I may need to kind of encourage it as you can see it does give us a nice little gradation ever have that moment where you're not sure if it's a wild turkey or a child loose in your kitchen <laughs> no i always know it's children <laughs> i think i would be almost delighted if it was a wild turkey uh but then also probably afraid I'm just making sure it's nice and pulling down. Now to do the next mountain, this would need to be completely dry. So um, again, if you have the free time to allow it to just naturally and organically dry, um, that's not the worst thing, you know, by any means in the world. One thing I can do sometimes is since this is far from this, I can come here, see, because they have a separation, oh. and kind of do the first part of the green and flowers. So I'm wetting that whole lower part of the heart. And now let's go into the opera pink because it's such a light color. And I'm going to make loose clumps of little flowers. If you've uh, done Acrylic April with me, you've already painted the Carpathian Mountains. So <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, those are rhododendrons. <laughs> I know what those are. 
rhododendrons. And they are. I don't know why there are rhododendrons in the Carpathian Mountains. Uh, I like using the opera pink for it. Now you can see that that's all sort of blending together. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo green and I'm going to bring it down to my uh, nickel ozo yellow. If you only have one yellow, just use the one that you have. I'm going to bring this along here. Sometimes I'll get a little more yellow. You can see I'm working that yellow a little more. And I think it's a good idea to kind of come where, see how the pigment naturally has left little white spots? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I use that to help me like go, oh, that's where maybe I'm going to put a little green. But I do want to weave a little green into the pink uh, for it to look real. And while everything is just uh, a bit wet, I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green. And this is quinacridone gold deep. Uh, you could use burnt sienna if you didn't have that. I'm just trying to make a a nice little deep green that I can blend. See how that blends nicely? That's quinacridone gold deep and phthalo green. But you just, if you just had a regular palette, you would want to pick your kind of burnt sienna and your green and just make a deeper green. You know, I know it can seem a little intimidating uh, when we're trying to paint to like, feel like oh yeah I know for sure that um, I'm going to be okay now one thing I can do here my mountain is dry enough for me to fold my paper and kind of do a nice little block I just don't want um, splatter all the way up the hill and I'm going to get my brush pretty wet I'm going to take another brush we're going to do the two brush method I'm going to wet out some quinacridone. Oh man, I got it everywhere. I got it over all the places I didn't mean to get it. So it's, it's flat, uh, that's why you masked it a little bit. That's why I masked it a little bit, but I needed to mask it uh, oh, more. You oh, it did deep and splat. over splattered. And so what I've got to do then is take this up. Now, fun trick is you can use a magic eraser when this is all dry as well. To pull up any color that happened outside of your painted area. That that created some nice kind of fun. I'll add some dark pink to that here and there. A little splatter. A little bit of that. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Maybe a little darker there at the corner. And again, sometimes it's nice to take a little green on the yellow and even come back because look, it'll push the pink back. Just a little dancey dance, wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. What a fun little painting. Wow. All right, so you want that to dry entirely um, on your surface. Uh, luckily, most of my splatters stayed on the, the mask. Um, heart. What I would do to prevent that in future is I would put two paper towels down in the oversplash area. I would also protect the white of the paper as much as I was protecting the top of the painting. But I didn't do that, and that's where I kind of made a mistake. So hopefully <laughs> you won't because you'll hear me say this. Um, but again, if you ever do get a stain on your paper, um, that's on an area you're trying to keep white, try that magic eraser trick because it's super fantastic. All right, we're going to let this dry completely. When we come back, we're going to put in the last mountain. Now here I want to do the drawdown method again, and I'm going to want this mountain to be a little bit darker than the one behind it. I'm going to go heavier into my ultramarine blue here. Just really, really heavy into it. Get a nice big load. And just a smidge of my quinacridone, just enough to darken it almost into an indigo. I'm going to come along here, and you can see trying to be darker than the mountain above it.
rinse out. And we're going to come here, rinse out better. It's okay because everything is blue here. Just pull that water down in. So you can see it's important to kind of catch it before it fully dries. And I've over wet it, so what I'm doing is I'm pulling out a little water and just offloading it a bit. A little of my blue. Just trying to make sure our value is is darker, but it's completely okay that it's like just kind of blooming down into that space being lighter. A little bit more of my quinacridone and my ultramarine blue. Look at us go. Wow. All right. So we need to let that dry completely, and then we're going to get to remove the frisket, John. Oh. Which is going to be really fun and super satisfying. <laughs> okay? All right. All right. When we come back, we'll do that. So the trick with masking agent, liquid masking agent, is the paper needs to be dry when it goes on, and it needs to be dry when it comes off. So before you attempt to remove it, make sure your paper is thoroughly dry. Not just the surface, but through the layers of the paper so it doesn't tear. I'm going to remove it with a tool called a uh, rubber cement pickup. This is a frisket remover. Graphic sells them uh, online. You can also just use your finger and an eraser. Um, but I'm going to use this. If you have latex allergies, Graphics makes latex-free liquid masking agent. Getting this stuff up. You can see it gives you a pretty crisp line if you put it down correctly. Yeah. It's very gummy. All right, we're going to time lapse the rest of this. <laughs> There's no reason for you to watch me rub this off for the next 10 minutes or so to remove all of this completely. Since I got my frisket on a little bit rough, I have some areas that I kind of want to maybe come in and just lightly repair. Mm. That's not an uncommon thing. So I'm going to come around just where it's maybe less perfectly smooth with a little bit of light color. And that's something that I can do. If I have anything that I kind of want to repair or smooth out just because i have that feeling about my heart you know what i'm saying i do i'm not using a lot of pigment and i'm coming in you know kind of wet believe it or not it will you don't glaze too heavily and you can come in with a wet brush to blend so if you've got some boo-boos like that that you're like oh, i really want to Move that out. You can do that. It looks pretty good. I don't really think there's anything left to do but put a signature on it. John? Wow. I know. It was fun. I think I'm going to use green today. I'm going to use a teeny tiny little brush because that's nice. I'm using one of the, a number six of the um, soft aquas. Now, I'm signing on the outside, um, outside here. So if I matted, I would mat around that, leaving a little bit of white of the paper on the heart cut mat or oval cut mat. And you can get heart cut mats. You can have a custom mat cut uh, for this if you want to frame. So you can have like a little keyhole opening. A damp rubber cement, not rubber cement, a damp uh, magic eraser, like just barely damp, will get any little boo-boos off on your paper, which is pretty cool. So this is just a really fun, beginner-friendly project that you can do of rhododendrons in the Carpathian Mountains. Wasn't that fun, John? That is fun. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I teach watercolor over here. 
If you're interested in acrylic painting, I teach that over on the Art Trip official channel. Um, I'd love to have you either location or both. I really appreciate your time. I would like to see your paintings. That's, the, that's something I really like. We have a Facebook group you can share. On our website, you can share. On Instagram or Pinterest or TikTok, you can share. You just hashtag it into me, the Art Sherpa or Art Sherpa. And I'm always on all of those. So, like, maybe I'll get to see your painting, which would make my day. You know what makes my day? Hmm. If you look really closely in those mountains, mm -hmm. you can see Vigo. <laughs> Vigo. 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 <laughs> the Ghostbuster reference, if you don't know why we're cracking up. All right. You're good. We're good. We're all good. All right. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to meet you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.